Welcome to one and all present. The Department of English, Nation Memorial Christian College, Marthandam. It is my pleasure to deliver the second day of the International Conference on the Women in Lit. Assistant Professor, Department of English, Chandigarh University. She earned a PhD and an MPhil in English from Central University of Himachal Pradesh and Himachal. She has experience of seven years. She has published. Aisha and Sarma, can you hear me? Aisha, ma. having presented various research papers, hello, uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, actually, we couldn't hear you clearly. Please check your net connection, ma'am. Okay, sure. Sorry for the trouble. I would like to restart it again. A very warm welcome to one and all present here. On behalf of the PG Department of English, Nation Memorial Christian College, Marthandam, it is my pleasure to deliver the welcome address on the second day of the International Conference on Women in Literature through Virtual Mood. It is organized by NMCC in collaboration with Cape Comorin Trust and Cape Comorin Publications. I would like to welcome Dr. Shika Thakur, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Chandigarh University. She earned a PhD and an MPhil in English from Central University of Himachal Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh University, respectively. She has experience of seven years in research and five years in teaching. She has published a book and various research papers, articles, chapters on multidisciplinary topics. Having presented various research papers at national and international conferences, she has also qualified UGC NET and HP SET. She has three PhD awardees to her credit, and she further looks forward to expanding her horizon across borders. We welcome you, ma'am. We are so glad to have you here. Hello, good morning, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Am I? Yes, ma'am. OK, thank you so much for such a uh, warm welcome. I would now like to initiate with the with my talk. And I'll just give me a while. I'll just upload the PPT. Just give me a while. <clears throat> oh. 
is the PPT visible? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. The PPT is visible. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> Okay, so let me just start with it. Well, um, I have been already introduced by uh, one of the students, I guess. Thank you so much for such a warm welcome. Well, my topic, something that I would want to talk about today is on womanhood and sentiments. These are two very important topics which celebrate the very essence of femininity. And I would also move on to discussing how in literature, these two, uh, the very idea of sentiments is seen and how uh, we also look at sentiments as something which is only associated with women. So we'll see all of these things, right? <clears throat> Please tell me in case I lose the connection, OK? Sure, yeah, thank you so much. OK, so when we talk about my concern is when we talk about sentiments in society, especially in terms of gender, we always feel that sentiments or emotions are associated majorly with women. <clears throat> so I would want to take you to uh, the lexical meaning of the word sentiments and see if any of the dictionaries while explaining the meaning of the term called sentiment talks about gender. So let's see if sentiments through dictionary is gender specific. So uh, when we cling on to Merriam-Webster dictionary, it talks about that the fact that sentiment is an attitude, thought or judgment promoted by feeling. So apparently we see you no know, gender association with sentiments. Number two, Cambridge dictionary explains uh, sentiment as a thought opinion or idea based on a feeling about a situation or a way of thinking about something. So we can see how uh, the uh, very recognized dictionaries while explaining meaning of the basic term called sentiment do not talk about specificity with any particular gender. Now let's move on. <clears throat> but in society, I'm sure we all must have encountered this. Um, it is always said women are very emotional, right? Uh, when it's about crying, obviously women also when we uh, watch serials, we've always seen women crying, crying, crying day in, day out. They have to also use glycerin in order to show their uh, emotional vent. But when it is about men, there's no idea of being emotional, right? We as society do not give that space to men to vent out their emotions. I'm talking about the very uh, natural emotions like crying. We are always there to judge. Now, my concern is in society, we always look at emotional, being emotional as a binary opponent of uh, rational. The one who's intelligent is opposite to the one who's emotional. So apparently, a woman, because she's marked with emotions in society, the opposite of woman, that is man, is considered to be rational intelligent. Right. So in being emotional and being intelligent do not go hand in hand. This is a problem in the society, which is why I've written what is the generic meaning of the term called emotional. It is seen as something which is a binary opponent or the opposite of rational in a society. However, we've already seen how in dictionary, none of the recognized dictionaries describe uh, sentiments or being emotional as gender specific. Now let's move on. <clears throat> now we have different communities across the globe right there are people living everywhere which is why we say india is a very diverse country after every next curve there's a whole set of new community living now this particular community every community rather has a particular way of life they have an ideology how they imagine life right and the way they imagine life is circulated with the help of three things number one ritual <clears throat> number two symbols and number three stories right and this is where emotion comes in so what i'm trying to tell you is here this 
no association with any gender i'm telling you everything which is very natural which naturally comes to us as humans but society has always brought in sentiments as a means of gender specificity so when i talk about a community any community rather that particular community has a particular way of life how they look at the world how they look at the li at life what happens after after the death so there is there is a whole set of story that is there where rational goes up for example if we are very rational for example uh, <clears throat> according to science when a body when somebody passes away somebody dies according to science that body is of no use it can be thrown into the garbage it's a piece of trash but we as human beings we put aside rational then and we bring in our emotions do we ever do away with the body after somebody passes away no right there is a whole set of ritual that comes up after 10 days 12 days one year four years there are people visiting your place and then there's a whole set of ritual which is there why because these are emotions which are gender neutral right so my concern is to simply bring this to everybody's notice that emotions are gender neutral and we will also move on to looking at how in literature emotions have been portrayed in a different way and whatever they did right so here my concern is if i have to talk about any community if i have to understand anybody's way of life there are three ways number one rituals number two symbols number three stories so much uh, much before language came into being i'm talking about the word language we used to interact with the help of symbols signs i'll just show a photograph for example if there is somebody <clears throat> a child for example who doesn't know how to speak will be able to send across the message to the mother or the parents whomsoever he's with he she's with at home will be able to communicate with the help of symbols or sign language right so this there is a whole set of emotion associated with everything now let's move on to when we talk about buddhism i mean here we'll be talking about various religions and how the very idea of emotion represents their ritual so when i talk about buddhism for example and we all know buddhism is one religion which talks about it beautifully talks about the cyclic philosophy that means you take birth you die you take birth you die and in order to relieve yourself of this cycle of birth and rebirth you need to achieve salvation so there is a sign of cycle 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 so here when we look at this particular structure this is shanti stupa in le so this is a symbol now the symbol is representing an emotion emotion which is gender free emotion which is gender neutral now when when i talk about this particular structure stupa it is it is constructed over four pillars with a stupa at the top now how is it representing the cyclic philosophy when you look because there are four pillars when you look for from one pillar you'll be able to look only the down area you look from any of the pillars only the down area is visible that is a cycle but in order to get away in order to free yourself of the cycle of birth and rebirth you have to attain moksha and the moment you go up once you have uh, freed yourself of this particular cycle once you go up right where there's this uh, pavement you'll be able to see the world so this is exactly what gautam buddh also said that in once you are enlightened you'll be able to see the world from a different angle everything will be under you right so there's a new sense that is given and this particular structure is a symbol which reflects the emotions of buddhism in terms of their cyclic philosophy where it is gender neutral <clears throat> now when we talk about hinduism there's yet another beautiful ritual which is durga puja and durga visarjan again in hinduism also there is a sense of belief you take birth you die you take birth you die so there's a rebirth cycle so again when we talk about durga visarjan we dunk the ball uh, the idol expecting it to be repeated the next year so again this is a ritual the previous one that i showed was a symbol that represented an emotion here again it's a beautiful ritual which is representing an emotion in hinduism so my only concern is to see how emotions 
in different communities are gender free but in society when we talk about man and woman woman is considered to be more emotional while man is considered to be rational i don't understand one thing how can being rational be considered as a binary opponent of being rational anybody can be rational and intelligent both but looking at it as a opponent is a problematic discourse <coughs> likewise when we talk about christianity and islam they believe there, there is a concept of when we talk about egypt basically right there's a concept of when somebody dies they do not uh burn the body they do not cremate the body they rather make pyramids why because there's no sense of rebirth in islam and christianity there's a belief of just one life there's a linear philosophy you you just live once in your lifetime so apparently when you die your remains are preserved either in the form of a pyramid or in the cemetery the graves are preserved so again this is a ritual and this is a symbol also which represents an emotion there's no science behind it so let's do away with science for a while okay so this is again gender neutral so i'm trying to tell you how in different religion different communities across the globe things are done most of the things that we do is about our identity the way we look at the life nobody knows what happens after the body after somebody dies who goes where what happens but these all are emotions that describe us as human beings how we are different from animals animals obviously feel sorry for the loss of their loved ones like we've seen how in case of elephants a baby elephant dies and the other elephant is the elder elephants are seen mourning them for a while they go get leaves with the help of their trunk keep it on the body so on and so forth but usually when we look at animals they do not know how to mourn moreover they do not have symbols or rituals we human beings have we are fortunate enough in that sense but the problem is in human beings also we have created a category man and a woman woman is supposed to have emotions man is supposed to be unemotional so on and so forth next <clears throat> now after having seen all of these pictures can we still say being feminine is being emotional being masculine is being rational we cannot say that this makes no sense right we have seen that how emotions express us as an individual as a human being as somebody much different from animals but still in society this is a problem which needs to be addressed okay <clears throat> how often do we see how often do we see a man crying it's not that man doesn't cry men do cry it's just that from childhood it's itself if it is for a boy the boy is always told that in order to be strong being a strong man you need not cry you need not have very mushy talks you need to be very sturdy stoic aggressive violent which is one of the reasons why even research was able to find it which is one of the reasons why at this point in time maximum number of men have been suffering have died rather because of cardiac arrest maximum number we have always seen around us the maximum number or the rate is max more rather for men losing their life because of heart attack why because we as society have not given them the space to vent out their feelings we've always judged them it is considered to be a sign of weakness so it is about understanding that emotions are natural emotions are gender free and we need to change our thinking in order to create a better environment so that everybody is able to coexist <clears throat> now let's understand obviously whatever i just said did not cannot happen overnight there is a whole set of conditioning that happens from childhood itself the idea of a strong and a good boy is different there are different roles there are different frames while for a girl to be strong and good there is a different set so there are different um, subjects that affect this particular discourse number one family i still remember as growing up i have myself encountered and i'm sure many of us must have also realized the same thing when it is about the tone 
a girl is supposed to have a very tender tone, very soft. She cannot be very, she needs to be submissive. So these are different roles that a woman is supposed to render. And this is the type of, this is the type of approach a good woman needs to have in order to consider, fit into the frame of a good girl or a strong girl. Right. Then we talk about similar as the case with boys. They cannot be scared of dark. They need to be very strong. Girls are supposed to be very protective. So I'm talking about all the uh, different subjects that have had very uh, that have had very strong impact on creating our mindset of the way it is now. But this is high time to realize what has happened and let's unlearn and then relearn. Commercials. So there's this uh, one uh, very popular commercial that I came across, which advertised uh, Imperial Blue. It was uh, it was an advertisement where uh, there's a man. He was on the stretcher, almost at the verge of dying, and the doctor. She he's, she was a female doctor, so she goes and checks the nerves of the patient. The moment she holds the nerves. The man is elated. He goes very horny. He's he starts smiling, and suddenly his heartbeat also increases. And woman, the uh, female doctor, she starts smiling. So we have to understand how in society all of these commercials are creating a big negative impact of how a man, the moment a female touches her, the very idea of going high is naturalized and for a woman to feel happy that see i am being liked by a man or man is going high looking at me or touching me one has to smile so this is one of the reasons why rape in india is increasing we are actually creating a space where female has to feel good the moment man looks at her and this is the idea of a girl and a boy we are creating very negative uh, space, which is which is highly questionable. Also, when we talk about Asian paints, there was this advertisement of Asian paints where a woman was advertising it. What is the connection? Because you have to sell the body of a woman, right? So we have to understand how around us, throughout, through different mediums, we are creating a very negative ideology of man and a woman. We are pressurizing these two genders to behave a particular way, which is creating a problem in our society. Also, when we talk about Bollywood songs, you've seen all the item songs. In all the item songs, it's the woman who's performing the dance. And there are thousands and tens of men around her. Items on the term item itself means that woman is an object and we celebrate all of that, right? So automatically when we bring in the idea of woman being an item or woman being an object through different mediums, obviously we are simply bringing her out as an unintelligent person. So there are two very important things to understand. Being emotional and being intelligent go hand in hand. But women is all woman in society is always considered to be unintelligent, more emotional, right? We've seen all the ads, all the um, when it is about uh, attracting things, you go get a woman. When you uh, look at the air hostess, it is always a beautifully refined woman. When you look at admissions, you see women, the women. When you go to a hotel in the receptions, it is usually a woman. Why? Because you have to attract people. You will be able to attract only if you put something attractive. And woman obviously not considered being intelligent and is considered emotional. We can see how she simply objectified. Now let's move on to literature. <clears throat> okay. So now because of this particular... Uh, um, Conditioning that has happened since time immemorial in everybody's life, family, commercials, Bollywood, literature. This is a sort of idol. This is the sort of a model that is created. Who is a strong and a good man? The one who is violent. At this point in time, we complain of men being uh, 
men being violent, which is why maximum number of domestic violence cases are reported. Now, we need to understand who's responsible for it. Somewhere down the line, we, of course, because from childhood itself, we have not allowed men to cry. We have not allowed men to express any of their emotions. If they love somebody, we cannot expect them to be very cordial. We'll judge the masculinity of man if that person is being very mushy, being very uh, amiable and being very polite. So in order to always showcase his masculinity, we force that person since childhood to be very aggressive, to be very sturdy. Apparently, at the end, man is left with no emotion other than violence. And then there are issues of domestic violence. So it's not that who's stronger and it's not a competition to prove who is stronger in such cases. It's about understanding that this is a this is a, this is a huge this is a huge conditioning that has happened and we as women have failed to give them the space to give vent to their emotions and then the epitome is apparently created woman is violent oh, sorry men are violent and strong women are tolerant they have to keep tolerating. This is the idea of a strong woman. When it is about relationships, a man can be violent with a woman as much as he feels like. And women are always taught in society, you need to be more compromising. You need to get going your family. You need to carry on with... Uh, just give me a second. So uh, you have to carry on with... the. Uh, um, family you need to be more forgiving you need to be more compromising you need to be a strong woman you need to carry on with your family no matter what right so this is an idle picture of a man and a woman which is created in society because of the conditioning that has always happened now rational just like i told you men are rational they're intelligent whatever they do there's a reason behind it women are emotional they get carried away with feelings and all of that stuff third way important men are made to commit like for example if it is adultery or if they harm their wives it's okay it happened probably because there was pressure from the boss or pressure in the uh, uh, in the workplace but women is expected to just forgive it's okay maybe it was a very serious uh, he was undergoing a serious turmoil in his family in his life in his workplace so just forget it so these are different binaries which are created as the result of the picture that I just created in front of you. Men is expect men are expected to go out earn their livelihood. They are worldly. Women are expected to be homely, look out after the house, nurture the kids, uh, feed your husband, and all of that stuff. And obviously, the most important one is aggression which leads to domestic violence. They are aggressive. This defines a strong man. And here, women, they're supposed to be very calm, composed. And most of these songs talk about women being so tender, soft. These all words like haya, lajja, nazaka, these all words, adjectives are associated with a beautiful woman, a good woman. But for a man, he's supposed to be very sturdy. So we have to understand from where is this all coming. It is coming from the society. And what is society? It's you, it's me, it's not a third person. So we, in the first place, need to change our outlook towards the world. Okay, now moving on to the most important part, which is literature. Literature has always, to me, literature is a social institution, which addresses social unit, society, and which it is addressed to social society, society and it's talks about it is influenced by social forces so we can never talk of literature as something disconnected from society okay whenever any piece of literature is written we need to first thing we need to do is go trace it in the history of english literature apparently we will be able to understand the socio-economic politics of the time when the work was written so when I talk about Wuthering Heights I'm sure this is one of the important texts and many of us must have already read it so uh, it is a Victorian text. And we all know about Victorian woman. Who is a Victorian woman at that point in time, when, which, which was the age of science, inventions, discoveries, 
X, Y, Z. Everything was to be held. So at that point in time, there was social unrest in society because poorer, poor people were getting poorer, rich were getting richer because of the advancement in technology, atomic bombing, nuclear weapons, steam engine, printing press, X, Y, Z. So there was this circulation of funds had ended. Also, there was a huge conflict between science and religion. People were not able to, because science was increasing, 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 its hold was gaining weightage. People were not able to come to terms with what, Bible, what the Bible was saying. So there was this conflict, social unrest in society. There was this unrest, uh, con conflict or clash between science and religion. Amidst this, what happened to women? There was this idol picture of women which was created at this point in time. Number one, they were supposed to be pure, too chaste, refined, and modest. That means they were supposed to have proper etiquette, manner. Victorian manners were very important. When we look at fashion today, most of the fashion is influenced from Victorian fashion. Women were supposed to have uh, morning dress, different dress, afternoon dress, evening dress, just to please men. So here again, the concept of woman being intelligent has gone to the margins. Woman being an object has come to the center. So when we look at this cover page of Wuthering Heights and we see a female riding the horse, by looking at it directly, we understand that she in no way proves to be anything amongst these adjectives, pure, chaste, refined, modest, no. She looks, she's, she's much above this. So here we have in this particular work, we have uh, various characters. <clears throat> so it was published in 1847 by Emily Bronte. And here we talk about two major characters, Catherine, who was who's the protagonist, and Isabella Linton. So the purpose behind showcasing different women in this particular work by Emily Bronte looked like she is trying to bring in a new image of a woman, something much different from the idle imagination of a Victorian woman. Here we talk about Isabella Linton who is Hindley, Hindley's uh, Edgar's sister and Hindley's uh, wife. Uh, here what happened was is, Isabella is considered to be very submissive, the one who is a Victorian idol woman. She's, she looks, she has beauty. The idea of beauty is again blonde hair, straight silky hair, blue eyes, lean body, something that is reflected through Barbie dolls that we play with. I'm sure we all must have never come across a Barbie doll which is darker in color, which is dusky, which is very wobbly. No. Why? Because again, the idea of beauty is circulated from the West. It all comes from Victorian age majorly. And in order to look beautiful, you have to fit into this category. Okay. So here the writer is trying to project Isabella as a, as a Victorian woman who doesn't have a say. She's very timid, very submissive. Very chaste, virtuous, who doesn't say anything. Whatever other people, men in her life take the action, she goes with the course of that. When we talk about Catherine, the protagonist, she's bony, she's muscular, she's wild. This is how she's described. She's wild. She's spirited. She's rebellious. She's spoiled. And she's then, according to Victorian idol woman, she doesn't fit into the frame. And therefore, she is considered to be arrogant spoiled so you have to understand even today in society there are different frames for the women in victorian age there were just two angelic the one who fits into the variety category of a good and a chaste woman is angelic the other one is whore the one who doesn't fit into it there were just two categories so they had that that was the time when gender was fixed fixation of gender was done and we failed but with the help of these um, uh, writers, we've been able to understand how gender is fluid in nature. Likewise, when we talk about yet another work, The Scarlet Letter, one of the landmark texts from American literature by uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, 
Now, this work was written in 1815, but it is set against the backdrop of uh, Puritanical Age, that is 1642 in America. So we all know what is Puritanical Age, when religion was at the center. The radicalism, the fundamentalism, and the extremism in religion was at the center. Again, what happened? <clears throat> Who's a strong, angelic, good woman? It is again reflected through the work. The one who's tolerant, keep tolerating whatever happens in your life. Be quiet, do not speak, be dependent on your partner. But the weak, monstrous, bad woman is intolerant. No, I will not tolerate what is happening. I am opinionated. I am independent. So here we have this wonderful woman named Hester Prynne, who is, we all know how she was uh, <coughs> considered, uh, uh, <coughs> how she was considered guilty of committing adultery. So when she committed adultery, she had the guts to go stand on the scaffold carrying her daughter Pearl, where the entire world was questioning her about the paternity. They all wanted her to reveal the paternal side of the daughter Pearl. But she is opinionated enough to say a no to everybody. She says, I'm never going to disclose who it was. And at the same time, there's this man whom she was married to, and he is almost double her age. Right. Nobody talks of the domestic violence she was suffering at that point in time, much before that case at the hands of his, her husband. But everybody is holding responsible for having committed adultery. Right. And then she's punished to punished uh, with the same and is forced to continue carrying uh, wearing a throughout her life. So we see how denying the moment she denies. No, I'm not going to say this. She's considered to be. She's considered to be monstrous. She's considered to be bad woman. So we have to see how denial is not the right to deny. The right to say a no is not given to woman. And there are different reasons why this has happened over time. So at this point in time, literature is a literature, literature is a revival. Literature is, literature is giving us this weapon to decide what is the actual meaning of the word called strong we see here hester Prynne. she is she brings up her daughter as a single parent without taking help of any of the men in her life she knows that her condition is not strong enough to nurture the woman nurture the daughter but she takes away the daughter from everybody's clutches she does everything to raise her up she gives her good moralistic lessons and then she engages her in needlework helps the needy people should he is so but even then she's considered to be a monstrous woman she's a bad woman why because she denied things she was intolerant of what society was throwing at her and she's an independent woman so all of the three points actually redefine the very idea of strength through the work okay so we can see how <clears throat> okay and the next one that I have brought in is uh, Look Back in Anger by John Osborne, which is a modern text, of course. So here we have Jimmy Porter and Alison Porter. So this is a couple. And we also see that Jimmy Porter, Porter throughout, the, uh, throughout the work, we see how Jimmy Porter is busy venting out his irritation, all the negative emotions, harshness, abusing, abusive languages. He's unloving. He's angry, no matter what the reason is. We understand it was because of uh, the angry movement. He was completely not uh, acceptable towards how employment was denied in Britain post World War. But we have to look at the emotions that are given to the characters by the writer, because we can only see a man being getting irritated, getting forgetful. He's shouting at the top of his voice is at Alison. And we see Alison being very sorted when she keeps ironing the clothes. She's forgiveful. She's keep, she keeps waiting for Jimmy Porter to come back to her and go ahead with the cordial conversation. But that never happens. And he's shown with so much of anger. And he's the protagonist. So we see how anger, unlovingness, abusiveness, irritability, forgetfulness are the adjectives which we in society have associated with men forcefully forcing them to not celebrate the other emotions wherein we've already seen that 
all of these emotions are gender neutral that is one of my major concerns in the work now <clears throat> i'm sure now we will be able to challenge the constructed femininity and masculinity we look at women with profuse with sentiments and we consider women to be more forgiving more compromising and thus be more feminine so for a woman to be feminine she's supposed to supposed to keep up the household she's supposed to even now at this point in time in 21st century when women are moving out of their households earning their livelihood even then at the end of the day they are they are expected to be forgiving very compromising subtle but for men even if they've started doing the household chores at the end of the day they are considered to be violent in order to express their masculinity so we have to see how from where this all is coming and what it can lead towards again when we talk about masculinity somewhere down the line it's about strength and femininity it's about having your eyes down or decorating yourself so all the images above anyways root the same and now <clears throat> one very important concern is to see uh when we talk about these two genders basically man and woman there is physiological difference that is agreed upon there is no competition between the two genders yes there is physiological difference but when we talk about cerebral difference the intellectual difference there is no intellectual difference leadership intelligence smartness emotionality etc are gender neutral a woman should get a job because she deserves it not because it is a woman or a man the person is intelligent because person has that particular intellect not because it's a man so by default man will be intelligent right so a person is emotional person is feeling low at this point in time because of x y z factors not because it's a woman we've always seen even now i have quite often seen my friends around when a man cries for example so the comment that comes from the other person is are you on your periods you're whining so i don't understand from where is this all coming and how emotionality is simply associated with women and is considered to be a weakness for men while for women it celebrates their femininity we have seen over the course of time how different mediums have been able to tell that this is a very wrong direction we are leading a generation to but it's high time to also start accepting the difference and change it so men and women are equally emotional but women show their emotions more than men again the reason we've already discussed because from childhood itself different mediums around us have made us believe that you have every right to express your feelings where contrarily they are denied they are denied to showcase their emotions so let's now i'm sure we are all able to conclude what is the idea of a strong woman obviously it's hester prin who who knew how to say a no who knew how to be opinionated and who knew how to be independent however at that point in time in puritanical setup she was considered to be a monstrous woman whereas the other women those who confined to the norms of puritans was considered to be a strong woman so again the strength of a man is the one who is independent and who is emotional of course so whenever we talk about these emotions remember these all emotions are gender neutral redefine strength the idea of strength again can be redefined because nothing is gender uh, specific so now can we now please cease to normalize my only uh, conclusion in this particular lecture is to plead and urge people to stop normalizing stop legitimizing the following anger violence irritation are men's fundamental emotions no politeness tenderness love are women's fundamental emotions no these all are emotions and we all are human beings we all suffer from any it's very important to get upset at times and it's for both the genders it's for human beings we human beings are different from animals they cannot express it in words we have different ways of expressing it we might shout at somebody 
right we might uh, want to go to the nature and sit in isolation so there are different ways but the moment we bring in this gender specificity with a particular emotion is a problem so let's try not legitimize it so these are my important takeaways celebrating sentiments as gender neutral celebrating femininity and masculinity as biological difference than cerebral difference and the most important acknowledging the role of literature in instilling fluidity in gender That's all from my side. So uh, any question? Anybody has any question? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah. I have a question here. Uh, you explained the redefinition of strong women. Uh, yeah, but I have a question here that when we redefine the strong women, it means women are more mature than men and let them do what they want. So basically, in society, at every uh, step or in every cases or in uh, uh, our houses, even we used to say, uh, "Let the boys do whatever they want. You are mature enough. You are uh, samajdar." So these are the you know kind of comments we are getting. to be remain uh, quiet and settle every time is that justified no ma'am not at all i'll just give you an example for example when it is about driving also hai na to at this point in time when i drive main kafi lamba drive kar leti hu to sabko wo achievement every day wow it's an achievement to itna zyada drive kar leti ho and for a boy wo chauthi class se agar drive kar raha hai na wo uska birth right hai you getting my point it's not justified at all so everything has to start from a family first of all so you basically i think i think these are very much engraved in the traditions and conventional thoughts that uh, women or girls should remain quiet they should not be violent or expressive or aggressive exactly exactly we've always seen see when it is about also uh, beating a woman so ghar we are always told कोई बात नहीं हो जाता है बहुत अपसेट होगा वो exactly. बहुत प्रेशर exactly. होगा और हमें अच्छा तभी माना जाएगा इफ वी गेट गोइंग दी फैमिली अदरवाइज एक थप्पड़ से क्या हो जाता है एंड ऑल दैट क्रैप सो हम क्या कर रहे हैं हम इस चीज को प्रमोट कर रहे हैं अगर सह रहे हैं वी आर प्रमोटिंग दैट मैन आर वायलेंट पर उनकी वायलेंस के पीछे भी हमने बचपन से ही उन्हें जज किया है तो लास्ट में समहाउ आई एम फीलिंग दैट वीमेन आर टीचिंग द सेम यू नो टू फॉलो दीस ट्रेडिशंस टू अस बिकॉज़ आवर मदर आवर मदर इन लॉ और सिस्टर और एल्डर सिस्टर्स आर टीचिंग अस रादर देन मेन एग्जैक्टली राइट राइट सो वी नीड टू चेंज देखो अक्सर आई हैव सीन हम सोसाइटी पे इल्जाम लगा देते हैं सोसाइटी की गलती सोसाइटी क्या है मेरे लिए आप सोसाइटी हो आपके लिए मैं सोसाइटी तो यहां से हमें बदलाव लाना पड़ेगा ना Thank you so much, ma'am. It was really a good session with you. Thank you, thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Any other question? Okay, then I think. uh let's call it a day thank you so much for being my patient listeners my only uh, expectation is to please to urge you all to bring the minutest difference in society let's take the smallest step today men women all of us because we have to coexist here it's not a competition between men and women it's about understanding that there is biological difference but based on that biological difference we cannot keep creating bifurcation in society competition mein leadership mein uh, jobs mein har jagah gender gender lane ki zarurat nahi hai so what i do is i make it a point to my students that before you enter the class forget three things number one gender your obsession will gender will with gender will not let you grow 
अगर आपको हमेशा यही लगता है मुझे ये पढ़ना चाहिए बिकॉज आई एम अ बॉय मुझे ये करना चाहिए बिकॉज आई एम अ गर्ल दैट्स अ प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू फर्गेट योर एसोसिएशन विद वन पर्टिकुलर रिलीजन यू डू थिंग्स जस्ट बिकॉज यू कम फ्रॉम दिस रिलीजन इज अगेन प्रॉब्लमैटिक नंबर थ्री योर पोलिटिकल अफिलियेशन सो वेन वी डू अवे विद दीज थ्री थिंग्स एटलीस्ट इन इन अ ग्रोथ प्लेस जहां हमें कुछ पढ़ना है दैट्स वन ऑफ दी वेज हाउ वी कैन ग्रो सो दैट्स ऑल फ्रॉम माई साइड थैंक यू सो मच Thank you, ma'am, for your informational speech and presentation.